All right. How many are ready for God's word? Say yes. yes. You come expecting to receive something today? Yes. You know, um, how many know what four weeks from now is? Easter. Easter. How many have somebody you're already inviting to Easter? Say yes. yes. All right. That's exactly what I thought was going to happen. So let me just tell you this. There's going to be a lot of people, a lot of people who are going to church somewhere on Easter. They're showing up. They're, they're going to church. They don't usually go to church, but they are going to church somewhere. How many know where they're going to go? Wherever they're invited to. So guess what we're going to do? Guess what we're going to do? There you go. We're going to invite them to Cornerstone. We've made it really, really easy, and we have a lot of goals for this year at Easter. Listen to this. Here's our goal. We're believing that God's going to send 3,000 people over the Easter weekend to Cornerstone. How many believe God can do it? Say yes. 3,000 people. And, and some would say, well, numbers don't matter. Numbers matter. Numbers, ma- numbers matter to God, and they should matter. To- Jesus died for every number. And as long as there's anybody that doesn't know the somebody who died for them, numbers matter. And we're believing for 100 people to give their lives to Jesus over the Easter weekend. How many believe God can answer that prayer for us? He'll, he'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do it if we'll do our part. We've tried to make it really easy on you. Um, we have some T-shirts outside. I want you to get them. Some of the team had them on the day. I have mine on right now. Um, Graves to Garden is going to be the theme for this year. It's going to be a beautiful story about God, how, how God takes the dead places of our life, the grave um, moments, the grave-like seasons of our life, and turns them into beautiful gardens. This place is going to be turned around. It's just going to be a, a really, really great, great weekend. You don't want to miss it. You want to bring your friends. Palm Sunday, the week right before it, uh, we've already got animals. The kids are going to be here. It's just going to be a great day to set up the Easter season for us. So, so I hope that you'll pick up. You can get a shirt on your way out. Um, I think they're $12. That's less than it cost us. Um, but we just want to try to almost, almost getting close to covering the cost, but not all of it. Then we have these signs that we want you to put in your, in your yard. How many know there are people who probably drive past this church or they've seen it somewhere online and they're like, oh, we'd love to go to that church, but I don't know anybody who goes there. Put a sign like this in your yard. All of a sudden they're like, oh, you go there. So starts a new friendship, starts a new conversation. And um, I just kind of like holding the sign. Come on, give me a J. Yeah. Give, give me an E. I'm just kidding, you guys. Uh, no, but if you want to pick up one of these signs, you can pick them up and, um, and put it in your yard. I think they are $5, $5 is what, um, a little less than we paid for these signs. But um, if you want to pick them up, wear the shirt all over town. Palm Sunday, we're going to ask everybody to, everybody to wear one of their um, Easter at Cornerstone shirts. Wear it to church on that Sunday and just going to have a lot of fun with that. And um, we hope that you will make plans to attend. We also have some invite cards that you can pick up on the tables on your way out. And then if you're interested in being a part of the, of the production or the, um, the stage or any of that, Pastor Matt will be down front right after the service. He'd love to talk to you about that and tell you some of the opportunities that are available. Well, here's what I want to do today. I want to talk about um, fighting for, we're in this series uh, called Fight fighting for last week and the week before we talked about fighting for our marriages, fighting for our families, our relationships. Today I want to talk to you about fighting for your future. How many know your future matters to God? And because it matters to God, it should matter to us. How many know there's a future that you were ordained for? And, and there's this kind of this, this mysticism about my future. How am I going to realize my best future? What's my future look like? How will I know if I'm walking into my, my, my future? And I just think that there is this certain, um, we need to demystify that whole idea about our futures. And um, we're going to do that for just a little bit today. But how many know you got to be able to see it before you can go there? you got to see it before you can be it. How many have heard that? you got to be able to see where you're, whatever you focus on is what you will become. Wherever you put your focus, that's where you will end up. I heard a story, maybe you, you heard it about this, this older guy. He um, was, had to move into a, uh, to an assisted living home and made some good friends, played checkers every day. And um, they were having a checkers tournament one day. And the guy had trouble focusing because he realized this, this lady in the home was staring at him, just kept staring at him. And at first, he was a little flattered, you know. He looked at his boys and said, ha, I still got it, boys. And, uh, but then after a few moments, it just kind of got irritating. And um, she just kept staring. So he said, well, I'll put a stop to this. I'll just stare right back at her. So he stares right back at her, stares her down, just stares. And she keeps staring. She wouldn't take her eyes off of him. He goes, all right, I'll stop it. So he gets up from the table. He walks over to her and he says, ma'am, he says, I can't help. 
help but notice how long you've been staring at me and it's become a little uncomfortable. I'd like for you to stop. So the woman says, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. I had no idea. I did not mean to embarrass you or make you feel uncomfortable. I just can't help but think about how much you look like my third husband. And the man said, oh, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very sorry. Did he pass? Or, and he said, by the way, how many times have you been married? She said, twice. <laughs> see, you got you to gotta see it before you can be it. You know what I'm talking about? See, here, 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 listen, people with passion, people with confidence, people with vision have the ability to see what things can become. People that are discouraged can't see past the way things are right now. I want to talk to you about your future because there's such a question mark on our futures. But listen, your future is not really a question mark. Your, your future is really an equal sign. Because wherever you end up 10 years from now is really, it equals, it's the sum total, it equals the decisions you make, the prayers you pray, the things you believe, and the things you do. So it's not some big mystery. You are where you are today because of all of the decisions that we've made. We are the sum total, and our future will be the sum total of the decisions we make, the things we believe, the prayers that we, that we, we pray. Where you end up 10 years from now will not be an accident. It will be very, very evident. Where you are and wherever you're, you're going, you'll get there one step at a time. Wherever you, whatever your future looks like, you will arrive at your future one step at a time. Let me show you. How many of you have ever had a, had a bad day? There's just like, why is my life this perplexing question mark? There's more questions than there are answers. Why do I feel so bad? Why am I so tired? I thought about this. How many times have you ever gotten up more tired than you went to bed? How many of you have ever gotten to the end of the day and you thought, I am still as tired as I was when I got up? Anybody ever been there? You know, so many, so many, how many have had those days, come on, just be real honest, where you, you hit the snooze button like three times, four times, five times. Now you get up and it's so late, you barely have time to brush your teeth. You can't get breakfast, so you grab a bowl of Fruit Loops or you pick up a donut on the way out the door. Stop by Starbucks, pick up that cafe latte milkshake that you try to convince yourself is coffee. And then you get to work and you scroll through your social media for 40 or 45 or 50 or 60 minutes on somebody else's dime. And then you go eat fast food for lunch. And then you come back and you hit social media again in the middle of your work day. And then on your way home, you pick up some fast food. And then you get home, you crawl in bed before you go to sleep. You scroll through social media for 30 or 45 more minutes just to make sure your mind is really confused. And then you have nightmares, bad dreams, toss and turn all night because you ate some crazy snack at 11 o'clock at night. And you wake up the next morning saying, why do I feel so bad? Why am I, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Well, the reality is all we have to do is look at the sum total of all the decisions that we made over the past 24 hours. And the reason we feel the way we feel is because we did what we did. But we are the sum total of all of those decisions that we, that we make. And I want to talk to you, hopefully today and, and next week, uh, a little bit about what your future looks like to God. What's the future you look like? through the lens of God. When God sees the future you, what, what, does, what does God see? I want to talk to you about how we can, how we can recognize, realize that, you know, the future me, the, the future you. What's that really look like? Because here's what I know about your relationship. If you have a relationship with Jesus, you will never, ever be any more forgiven than you are right now. But you will always be in the process of becoming. You can never be more forgiving, but you will never stop becoming. And we need to talk about who we're becoming. 
how, how we're becoming who God sees us becoming. It's a process. How do you know it's a process? Because Philippians, Paul tells us in Philippians chapter, chapter 1, he says, he says, you can be confident of this. Say, say it real loud. Say confident. confident. Come on, say it with some confidence. Say confident. confident. So you, can be, you can be confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until, he says, until the day of Jesus Christ. You can face your future with confidence. You can face your next steps with con- How many have some next steps you need to make? Some decisions you need to make? There's some next steps. How many want to go into those next steps with confidence? You, you can do that. Well, how do you? Well, I don't have that much confidence. You can't ha- tell me you don't have confidence. Well, yes, I can. No, you can't. Because if you're a child of God, you have the same blood flowing through you that raised Jesus from the dead. You have the same blood flowing through you that he said, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, of timidity, of, self, of lack of confidence, but I gave you a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. And to me, that sounds like all the ingredients of a lot of confidence right there. You've got that flowing on the inside of you, but we got to figure out how do I see the me I can be? How do I see the future me? How do I see my future with the confidence through the lens that God sees me with? And if it's anything like me, my flesh, man, my flesh, I got all kinds, I'm weak and insecure in my flesh, but my spirit, man, my faith, I've got, I've got great confidence in my spirit, but I'm just often so weak in my flesh. Anybody else like that? Like my faith is secure, but my flesh is really insecure. Anybody else like that? Anybody else like you on know, Sunday mornings? Maybe you do it on your way to work. I come to church on Sunday morning. I can't, almost every Sunday morning, you know what I say? I say to my faith, wake up, faith, wake up. You know what I say to my flesh? Shut up, flesh, shut up. Because my flesh is always trying to supersede my faith. So we, we talk about how do we, how do we move into this next season? How do you know? Well, Because he says you can be confident of this, that he who began the good work will carry that work through until the day of Christ. You know what confidence really is? Confidence is realizing what's already true about you. You you, you get confidence in yourself when you realize What's already true? What's true about you? You weren't given a spirit of fear, spirit of timidity, spirit of confusion, but you were given a spirit of power. Well, I just have a hard time loving. No, you were given the spirit of love. I just can't get my mind. No, you were given a sound mind. And confidence is when you realize, begin to realize what the Bible says is already true about you. So how many would pray with me today, Lord, give me my confidence back. Not in me, but my confidence in you. God, awaken my soul in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, how many receive that? Say yes. All right, now let's have a little fun. Uh, let's just pretend, okay, let's just say that, that Cornerstone is going to send you on your dream vacation. So I want you to dream big. Come on, boys and girls, put on your imagination. Your favorite city in the world, where would you go? We're going to send you anywhere, any city, any country, anywhere where you want to go. We're going to put you on a first-class seat in an airplane to get you. I mean, you, anywhere. You can, go to, you can go to the Bahamas. You can go to the Bora Bora. You can go to Barrow County, wherever you want to go, anywhere. Come on, you, you ready to go? Hey, hey, and you get to take somebody with you, as long as they're your friend or your wife, all right? No, no, co- no cohabitation on our expense paid trips, all right? But, but, but you, you take your wife or your friend. You ready? Y'all ready to go? All right, on the count of three, everybody look under your seat. Try to find your golden ticket. One, two, three. <laughs> you see how generous I am with your imagination? I, I told the first service, I tried to do it, but our, our bookkeeping office said, Scott, that's just per- terrible stewardship. So they pulled the God card on me. So on the counter, y'all ready? Come on, everybody got your place? You know where you're going? 
You, come on, in your mind, you got it? Where are we going? On the count of three. Our, on the count of three, scream out that location to me. One, two, three. Wow. Now that's confidence right there. Yeah, yeah you're ready to go. But you know what I want to talk to you today? Listen, I want to, today, I believe, I, I believe it's fun to dream about those all expense paid trips to some place that you really, really want to go in the world. But I believe there's something that you want more than that all expense paid trip. And that is confidence. I believe if, if, if I were to say I'll give you this or I'll give you this, I'll give you an all expense paid bucket list trip to anywhere in the world you want to go or I'll give you confidence. There's not a person in this room who would pick the trip over confidence. Because you know that confidence, just by, by definition, we'll, we'll define confidence. Confidence is, is, is the conviction about the goodness of God in your life and God's intent for your future. Confidence is, is your awareness, the conviction of the goodness of God. How many know God only wants good for you? Remember what he said, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, to give, not, to, not to harm you, but to give you a future and a hope. Confidence is the conviction of the goodness of God in, in your life and the confidence of the intentions that God has for your future. I just believe that as we look to our future, we can't look to our future without confidence. Confidence is, is, is understanding that we want that more than we want this. We want confidence more than, than we want that, that dream vacation that somebody else is going gonna, is gonna to pay for. If, I don't know if you figured this out, but for me, here's what I figured out. Confidence, man, whenever, when I'm walking in confidence, confidence can make my day. You know what I mean? But insecurity can break my day. You, you ever notice that? It's so important as you take your next step, whether it's this week, next month, next year, whether it be your future as it pertains to tomorrow or your future as it pertains to 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, or 60 years from now, that you recognize there's some things that you've got to know about going into your future with confidence that will carry you to the place that God sees you arriving at. And I just want to, want to take some, some time and I want to just, just talk about, about how we recognize that, that confidence. Um, I don't, I don't know, want to know what I can do. I want to know what God can do through me. I already know what, what I can do because I've seen the mistakes that I've made with what I can do. You, you already know. You know what you can do. You know what you're capable of doing. But do you know yet what you're capable of doing when God's working through you? Do you, do you know yet what you can do when, when, when you've given God the authority and the right to, to work all the way through you? Recognizing that it, it's in my weakness. I mean, I, I come to church and I'm like, I have to remind myself, this whole church thing, this whole ministry thing, this church wasn't my idea, it was God's idea. And it's difficult by design. And I have difficult days. We go through difficult seasons, difficult decisions. I remember it's difficult by design. God didn't design it to be easy. He designed it to be difficult because that forces me, it puts me in a position to rely on his strength and my, my strength. Because he, 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 it's, it's difficult. Listen, your job, sometimes our marriages, our relationships, the places that God's taken us to. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't put us you know, on, on you know, the love boat. He puts us on the, US, the, the, the SS Minnow sometimes, right? Because it's in those seasons that we learn to depend on his strength and not our strength. Because when everything's easy, when everything is good, I begin to depend on me, not him. So we have to remember so often the challenges that we face, the places that we go in life, it's difficult. Yes, yeah, difficult, but maybe it's difficult by design because it forces us to recognize that in my weakness, that's the place that he can be made strong. It's in that place that I'm forced to remember God's got me. God's got me. I don't know what to do. I'm a little confused, but God's got me. And if God's got me, I've got this. 
Can I, can I remind, can I say that's true of you? Listen, if God's got you, whatever your this is, you've got this. You can have, I don't know, if you're a mother or father, you can be a good mom. You can be a good dad. If you're an employee or an employer, you can be good at it. If you're the intern or if you're the owner, you can be good at it. If you're jumping into your first small group and it's awkward for you, if you're start leading your first small group and it's hard for you, if you're going through Financial Peace University and you came in with $100,000 in credit card debt, if you're buying your new home and you hope that you can do the maintenance and you hope you can pay the bills, if you're starting a new business, starting a new job, if you're applying for a promotion, listen, if God's got you, then you've got this. But you have, to, you have to know that God has you. Let me take you to a passage of Scripture that I think says it better than, better than any of us can ever teach it. It's a, one of my favorite passages of Scripture. It's a story, Matthew chapter 14. It's an encounter Jesus has with lots of people and then just with the disciples. It's really, listen, it's like a master's level class in confidence. This story is, is, is like a, a really great lesson. It's like going to graduate school, studying confidence. It's a story where Jesus encounters 5,000 people and he feeds them with a little boy's lunch. But then he has an encounter with the disciples and we'll pick up the story there. Immediately, this is after the miracle of feeding the 5,000, Jesus made the disciples get up, get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. Remember, they were crossing the Sea of Galilee. After he had dismissed the, the crowd, it says he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land. It was buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, now your translation, I like this translation, your translation may say the, the fourth watch of night, which means the, the last quarter of the night, somewhere between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. It says Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. I told the first crowd, of course he would. I mean, why walk around it when you can walk on it? Walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come on, Jesus said. Peter's faith response is awesome, but Jesus' response is even better. I told the first service, I love it because you better be careful what you ask Jesus for. He might say, come on. Tell me to come on. Jesus said, come on. Then Peter got down out of the boat and he walked on the water. He came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and he began to sink. He cried, Lord, save me. And immediately, God did for him what he'll do for you. If you'll do what Peter did, call out on the Lord when you're sinking. He said, immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and he caught him. He said, you have little faith. Then he said, why did you doubt? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind died down. And those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, this is the Son of of God. Jesus and Peter make up like the dynamic duo of teaching here when it comes to, to teaching us to, 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 to look at our future, to take our next steps with, with confidence. The first thing that we learn in this story is a powerful thing, and I want to just, just, just tell you that, that we have to, to look at this first before we can talk about these others that we'll talk about t the rest of our time today and then next week. We have to talk about the first thing that happens in this story, and that is Peter had to keep his eyes on Jesus. When you're looking at your next steps, when you're looking at your future, when, when you're looking at entering into, you, you know, your next season, a new season, a difficult season, 
a conversation that you know you need to have but you're not looking forward to having. A decision you got to make that's not an easy decision but it's difficult by design because it forces you to look to him and not look within you. The first thing you have to remember to do is keep your eyes on Jesus. Why is that so important? Here's the reason it's important. You have to keep focused on Jesus because you will move in the direction of your focus. Whatever you're focused on, you will go there. So you keep your focus, you keep your, your eyes on, on Jesus. Why, Scott? Because you will move toward whatever you're focused on. If you, if you ever play golf, it's one of the first lessons you learn in golf. If you're on a tee box, you can look at the fairway or you can look up to the water on the right or the water on the left. And if all you can focus on is not hitting your ball into the water, you might as well just pick up your ball, go across the lake and drop it in the drop zone because your ball will move in the direction of whatever you're focused on. So the first thing we have to remember when it pertains to our next steps or it pertains to our future and the confidence that we have to enter that season with is we have to keep our eyes, we have to keep our eyes on, on Jesus. You, you ever notice that, that, that your life will move in the direction of whatever you're focused on? If you're focused on fear, you're focused on anxiety, you're focused on worry, you will move into a season of fear and worry and anxiety. How many know fear never led you to peace? Worry never led you to confidence. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Me, me, and, me and Harrison were out playing golf um, last week, and we were at the UGA course, and there was, a, um, there was a body of water that I had to get the ball crossed, and, and I, I hit the first ball in the water. I hit the second ball in the water. Harrison said, Scott, they said, Dad, you can't keep your eyes off the water. You might as well drop in the zone across the lake because you're going to keep hitting the ball in the water. I said, no, I'm not. I'm going to hit the ball across the lake. Third ball, hit it in the lake. You know why? Because I couldn't get my mind off of not hitting the ball in the lake. You will, you will move in the direction of whatever it is you're focused on. So the first step in looking towards your future, whether it be your future tomorrow or next week or next month or next year, you have to keep your eyes on Jesus. It's a, it's a powerful, powerful picture. Keep your eyes on Jesus because you're always in the process of becoming. You're as forgiven now as you'll ever be. You'll never be more forgiven than you are right now. But you will also never stop becoming. In the process of becoming, does that make sense to you? You'll never be more forgiving, but you'll never stop becoming. He who began a good work will continue as you become in the process of becoming, the process of your future, your first step. Don't miss this. I might only get to this one today, and if I do, that's okay. You have to keep your eyes on Jesus. You have to focus on Jesus. Now, here's what's important about focusing on Jesus. If Sometimes we just want to know what Jesus says. What's Jesus say? What's Jesus say? I'm focusing on Jesus. What's Jesus say? No, sometimes before you look to hear what Jesus says, you've got to look to what Jesus did. Sometimes your focus on Jesus isn't just hearing from him, but it's emulating him, his actions. Emulating his behavior. So when you focus, when you keep your eyes on Jesus, in this story, before we focus on what Peter did, let's focus on what Jesus did. You remember the first thing Jesus did? He got the disciples and said, hey, y'all get in the boat, start rowing, head over to the other side of the lake. I'm going to start walking because I need to walk up this mountain to pray. You remember, you remember that? Jesus went, he got alone and he prayed. 
He prayed. He took time to get in the presence of God. Listen, he took time to get in the presence of God before he entered the storm. He got time to get in the presence of God as he was preparing for the miracle. So many times we just want to walk into a miracle. We just want to ask and we want to see a miracle. I mean, I prayed, I believed, and boom, God, send me my miracle. But I want to remind you today, if Jesus had to prepare for a miracle, how many know we're going to have to prepare for some miracles? As we're, as we're staying focused on Jesus, keeping our eyes on Jesus, remember, Jesus, he, he told them, y'all row across the lake, I'm going to walk up the mountain because I need some time in the presence of God to prepare for the miracle that's coming. You know, what's really interesting. I learned this when I was in Israel several years ago. I didn't, I didn't know this before. But the historians and the, the tour guides showed us, we were out on the Sea of Galilee, they showed us the mountain. And they said what's really interesting that most people never think about is from the mountain that Jesus was praying on, he could see the boat that the disciples were rowing in. From the place, did you, did you, from the place where Jesus was praying, he could see the disciples in the storm. What's that mean? What's the big deal? Here's the big deal. Don't ever forget this. Just because you can't see God doesn't mean God's not looking at you. In fact, in real time, you know what the Bible says? You know where the Bible says Jesus is right now in Romans chapter 8? The Bible says right now, real time, in this moment, Jesus is next to God. He's at the right hand of the Father, watching over us, praying and interceding on our behalf. Just because you can't see him doesn't mean he can't see you. Just a beautiful, beautiful, what would Jesus do? He would take time to get into the presence of, to get into the presence of God. Prepare yourself for the presence of God. While everybody else is out there rowing, while everybody else is working, while everybody else is struggling, while everybody else is working in their own strength, you are working on the presence of God. When you feel like you're getting behind while everybody else is getting ahead, well, if I take time to get into the presence, if I take time to wait and pray, if I take time on this decision, if I take time to, to make up my mind, if I take time, everybody else is hustling. I mean, everybody else is working. Everybody's out there getting ahead of me. Everybody, they're going to get such a head start. I'll never catch up with all of them. Listen, it took the, it took the disciples nine hours to row to where it took Jesus nine minutes to walk to. Why? Because he had had the favor and the presence of God in his life. There's something powerful about getting, getting in, being in, staying in the presence of God. When you keep your eyes focused on Jesus, when you start giving him, listen, what's that mean? How do I do that? Do I have to climb a mountain and pray? No. Here's what it means. It means you start giving him the parts of your life that you've gotten used to withholding from him. God, you can have this, but I'm going to hold on to this. I mean, I'm going to give you this, but I'm not ready yet to let go of this. You get in the presence of God when you start giving him the things that you've gotten used to withholding from him. You, you, you get into the, the presence of God when you say, you know what, God, I'm going to take time with you. I'm going to give you my first fruits, not my leftovers. I'm going to give you the first two, 10% of what you give me, not the last 2%. I'm going to give you the best of my time, not just when I'm not tired. I'm going to give you the best. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to be obedient to you. It's going to be your will, not my will. Your way, not my way. Your direction, not my direction. God, I'm going to come into your presence because I am desiring to step into my future with you. I am sticking with you. I'm not worried about who's out there hustling in front of me. I'm not worried about who's going to get ahead of me. I am waiting on you because I can do more with you than any of them can do without you. What takes them nine years to get there can take me nine weeks in your presence. Listen, there's something power. Don't miss this. There's something to the favor of God that comes from being in the presence of God. 
There's something to the favor that comes from being in the presence of God that you don't get any other way. Focus on Jesus. What part of Jesus? What Jesus did to prepare for the miracle. What Jesus did to prepare him for the storm. What Jesus did to prepare him when fear was was rising up all around him. There's 14 men in the same storm, in the same vicinity. 13 of them are scared to death. Only one of them is walking while the other 13 are rowing. And it's the one who made time to get in the presence of God. Keep focused on Jesus. Keep focused on what, 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 Jesus, what Jesus did with his life and with his, with his time. The future you. You want to see what the future you looks like when you focus on Jesus? The future you doesn't have to struggle all by yourself because you're stepping with Jesus. When you step into God's presence, when you when you focus on what He on what He would do, when He calls you to the deep waters, you don't have to to worry about what what happens because your confidence is is not in it, it comes from not from your flesh, but it comes from the favor that comes from knowing you've been in the presence of God. There's a favor. Listen to me. If you haven't made time to get into the presence of God, being in the presence of God, it may be riding to work, singing that worship song. It may be in the shower when you're praying. It may be, you know, the 30 minutes or the hour that you spend early in the day. It may be in that, in that app that you download that, that, that reads the Bible to you. It may be in your quiet time with the Lord. But listen to me. There is a confidence that comes from only being in the presence of the Lord that will not come any other way. You can get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. You can start your day. You can hit the ground running. You can hustle. You can go see every client. You can get every job prepped. You can can have everything outlined. You can have your day ordered. You can orchestrate it as smoothly as you want to. But you will never walk through that day with the favor of God unless you start off in the presence of God. Is this making sense to anybody? Yes. Yeah, you, you, you start, you start by, by keeping your eyes on Jesus, by watching what Jesus did. If Jesus needed to go to the mountain and pray before he entered the storm, how many know we probably need to go to the mountain and pray before we enter some storms? Just such a, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful picture. Because it's in that moment when you come out of God's presence. Listen to me. It's in that moment when you come out of that, the, God's presence that you know God's got you. And it's in that moment you realize that if God's got you, you've got this. Whatever your this is, if God's got you, you come out knowing that, that you've got this. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep keep focused on Jesus who is walking with you. You know what you'll find? You'll find yourself in other situations. You'll find yourself in the same situation as somebody else, but they get out of the boat and they sink and you're able to walk because of the one who's walking with you. When you, when you make time for the presence of God and the favor of God rest on your life, you'll find yourself walking where other people are sinking. Because you've made time for the presence. It's not what you can do. It's what you can do through God working through you. It's not what you can accomplish. It's what God can accomplish through you. When you keep your eyes on him, when you, when you give him the first and the best part of your day and the first and the best part of your life. Number two, number two, and I'll, I'm going to not even finish this one. I just want to give it to you to think about it. Number two is to act like a leader. 
Just act like a leader. Here's the reason I'll give you this first part. Because everything rises and falls on leadership. Everything. Your future, your today, your tomorrow, it all rises and falls on leadership. Leadership is, and now whether you, you know, if you're a mother or a father, if you're a sister or a brother, if you're an employee or an employer, does it, does, if you're the intern or the owner, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter. You, God, listen, God's view of you is the view of a leader. You are a leader. As a Christian, you are a leader. As a, how, many, how many followers of Jesus say yes? yes? You are a leader. You are a leader. You're leading your life. As he led his, you're leading your life as he led his life so you can lead other people to him. To be a a follower of Christ, by very definition, it it says that that we are are a leader of other other people. It was Bill Hybels who said this a long time ago. Um, He said, said, the most difficult, the most challenging person to lead is ourselves. Self-leadership is the most difficult leadership of all. You'll never lead another person that's more difficult to lead than yourself. And you know it's true because you've been there for every bad decision you've ever made. You've been there for every regret you've ever had. Self-leadership, self-leadership is the most difficult, it's the most challenge of all of these. And in this, in this season, we have to act like, we have to act like a, a leader. The future use. Here's what, here's what the, the Bible says in verse 28. It says, it says, Lord, if it's, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come on. Just c- come on. Not just you, but all of you. Not just one of you, but 13 of you. Come on. Peter is, Peter is trying to lead his own life. Peter's trying to act like a leader. Lord, if it's you, if it's you, tell me. Tell me, and here's the reason why. Listen, because you know what the world needs to see from the church? You know what the world needs to see from believers? They need to see some inspiration. The world needs to be inspired by us. But too many times, Christians and churches, you know what we want to do? We want to inform. We want to give our opinion. We want to give our instructions. But we don't give enough inspiration. Listen, the world doesn't need our information. The world doesn't need our opinions. The world doesn't need our instructions. They need to be inspired by the way we live. They need to look at our lives and say, hey, this is what life outside the boat really looks like. This is what it looks like to keep our eyes on a Savior who has water walking power flowing through our veins. This is what inspires the world. Let them see when the world sees you, what they see is what it looks like to walk outside the safety of the boat. Well, what if I get outside the boat and and I begin to sink? Well, God will do for you what he did for Peter, that water-walking God who is already with you because you've kept your eyes and your focus on him. He will just reach down and pull you up again. I mean, it's it's a powerful, powerful story. The world... When we go to restaurants this afternoon, when we go to work tomorrow, when we go home this afternoon, our neighbors, our friends, you know what they need to see us as followers of Christ? Acting like, acting like the leaders that we are because we've learned how to lead ourselves. Self-leadership is the most challenging, it is the most difficult, but it is also the most inspiring. Act like a leader. You want to take control of your future? You want to make right next steps tomorrow? Yes? Yes. Then act like a leader. Act like a leader. Lead Lead yourself first. Make the decision. Take the step. Listen, take the step that the confident version of you would make. Do you, you know what the confident version is? Make the decision that the confident version of you, I want to just preach on that, but I'm going to wait till next week to preach on that point. How many of you this week, you'll take the time just this week, Keep your eyes on Jesus. 
Come on, will you? As you process your future, you process your next steps, will you, will you let that be your homework this week? Keep your eyes on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Why? Because your life will move in the direction of whatever you focus on. Focus on Jesus. Not just what Jesus is saying, but focus on what Jesus did. Remember the bracelets, WWJD, what would Jesus do? You know what that is? Keeping their eyes on Jesus. Not just listening to what Jesus is saying, but doing what Jesus is doing. Before he invited Peter to walk on the water with him, he had prepared for that miracle in the presence of God. He had brought the favor of God with him to the place of his miracle. And I just, I want to encourage you, think about the things this week. Just think about those things. They're different for all of us, things that we've been withholding from God. I mean, only if you're really concerned about your future. Only if you, the, the future you, through the lens of God, is what you want to see. If the future you is all you want to see, well, that's, that's cool with me, if that's, but that's on you. Because I know me, I don't want to just see the future me through my lens because I'm limited in power. I'm limited in wisdom. I'm limited in gifts. I'm limited in everything. But me through him is unlimited. So you get to choose. Do you want to see you through your strength or you through his strength? And the only way you get to see you through his strength is if you focus on what he focused on. And that was presence. The presence of God that invites the favor of God into your moments. That enable you to walk when other people would sink. That would enable, you, would enable you to inspire when other people would just want to instruct. You, you see what Jesus did, right? Because he was ready. He had the presence of God. He said, just come on. He didn't say, now listen, put your left foot in and put your right foot out. He just said, come on. He didn't give him any instructions. He didn't give him an opinion. He didn't give him any correction, did he? Did Jesus do any of that? Nope. What did Jesus say? Come on. Why? Because Peter was inspired by what he saw. Because Jesus inspired him with his faith. He inspired him with the miracle. He inspired him with the favor of God that was on his life that enabled him to walk on what other people sank in. And Jesus inspired Peter. And Peter was willing to get out and walk on water. He was willing to lead himself, get over the fear, get over the anxiety. Forget that there's waves raging all around you and the wind's blowing. Forget how hard it's, ra- it's raining. If he can do it and he's been with God, I can do it because I've been with God. And he stepped out and the Bible says he walked on the water toward Jesus. You know what the world needs to see? They need to see some people who aren't afraid to get out of the boat. Some people who are confident that when they get out of the boat, God will enable them to walk on water. And if they sink, the God they're walking with will reach down and pick them up again. Baby, I am so grateful that 20 years ago you heard me preach a sermon that I don't even remember preaching. And God told you that if you were ever going to walk on water, you had to get out of the boat. Get out of the boat of the security, of the money, of the job, of all those things that you could do in your power. Or you would never experience life outside of the boat thank you our family's better this church is better I'm better because you had the faith to get out and walk where other people would have sank because you had been in the presence of God thank you for that thank you for that that faith inspires me and let me tell you something listen to me people the world the world needs to be inspired by us not instructed by us And the way we inspire the world is when we get out of our boat and all of a sudden we discover that we can walk where other people sink. Next week I want to talk to you for a few minutes about just in this one little verse 30, there's three self-leadership principles. I'm going to talk to you about how to lead your, how to lead your feet, how to lead your eyes. I'll talk to you a little bit about how to lead your how to lead your heart. Then I'm going to talk to you at, at, at the end about how to charge the storm. There's a difference in cows and buffaloes. I'm going to tell you how to have the spirit of a buffalo. I'll talk to you about charging the storms instead of running away from the storms.
this week, I just want you to spend time preparing. Preparing yourself for the miracle of a confident future. God won't, listen to me, God does not want you to face your future with fear. God does not want you to face your future with intimidation. God doesn't want you to take, face your next steps, your next decisions with anxiety and with worry. God wants you to face it with confidence. And the way you face your future with confidence, number one, number one, it always begins with keeping your eyes on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Why? Because your life will move in the direction of whatever you're focused on. So this week, this week, how many of you, you'll take time. You'll take time. Think about the things that you've been withholding for Jesus. And you'll say, God, I'm going to give them back to you. I'm giving you all of it. I'm giving you everything. I don't want anything to interfere with my focus on you. You get all of me. All of me goes to all of you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to obey you. I'm going to prepare myself for the miracle that you want to do through me. And it's not going to be easy. God's will, God's way is rarely easy. He doesn't want it to be easy. You know, as Christians, you know what we do? We, as, as Christians, we just somehow we, we kind of, um, we, we, we equate our comfort with God and our, our interruptions with the devil. We get an interruption or we get a you know, disruption. We're all oh, the devil, boy, the devil, the devil's after me again. The devil's after me again. Have you ever thought about the fact that maybe we need to invert that? Maybe. Have you ever thought about the fact that maybe it's the devil who's trying to keep us comfortable? Because the devil wants to keep us comfy in our little boat, you know, in our own little security. So we'll never get out and walk on the water. So we'll never experience a miracle. So we'll never do what we could have done if we believed that with God all things are possible. Maybe it's the devil who's keeping us comfortable, keeping us in the boat. And maybe it's God who's the great interrupter because he knows it's only if he interrupts our comfort that we'll get out and ever walk on a lake in the middle of a storm with a God who created all of it. So maybe this week, when it gets hard, you stop blaming the devil. Oh, devil, get me behind me. Maybe, maybe you'll say, devil, I don't have room to stay in this comfortable boat anymore. This is easy. This is smooth sailing. I can do this with or without God. Oh, but there's some discomfort all around me. There's some disruption all around me. The waves are starting to, to get bigger. The wind is starting to blow stronger. The rain is starting to hold. And, and, and listen, all of a sudden, faith rises up on the inside of you because deep begins to cry out to deep. You know what deep crying to deep is? Deep is the deep things of God. Sometimes we don't hear the deep things of God because we're looking for comfort, because we're looking for easy, because we're looking for smooth. But it's the deep things of God that get difficult when God put Daniel in the lion's den. How many know it wasn't just a deep den? It was a deep trial. It was deep trouble. And it took a deep faith that when the deep, if God was to sustain me here, God will sustain me there. If God will sustain me here, He'll sustain me there. If He kept me there, God will keep me here. And all of a sudden, I don't believe Daniel, I don't believe Daniel walked into the lion's den like this. I believe Daniel, when they put him in the lion's den, I believe Daniel walked into the lion's den like this. If God be for me, who dare be against me? This isn't the lion's den anymore. This is Daniel's den because the favor of the Lord is resting upon me. And you know what? The world didn't know what to do with him because now he's not walking in self-confidence. He's walking in God confidence because he had been in the presence of God. Don't ever miss the story. Jesus didn't just walk into the storm on the water. Jesus only walked on the water in the storm after he came out of the presence of God. Come on, will you do it this week? Come on, will you this week? Will you spend time? Will you spend time? 
Come on, will you, will you spend time just giving yourself to God, getting in the presence of God, getting the favor of God on your life? At your homework. Now here's what I want to pray. I just, I just, I did this in the first service. And I feel like we need to do it again. That there's some of you that are in the room right now, and there's some decisions that you have to make like this week. They're like right now decisions. There's some next steps that you have to take, like right now they're on you. You don't you don't really know what's next, but you know you've got to make a decision can't run from it anymore it's, it's on you and then and in this moment you need God confidence you need God's favor you need to know that you're hearing from God that you're stepping with God and not stepping out without God you need you need to know that you've got this because God's got you and you don't have time to wait until the second part of this sermon next Sunday you need God right now need to hear his voice right now you need his clarity right now you need confidence right now if that's you if that's you it may not be it might just be one person I don't care but if that's you I want to pray for you right now if it's you and you need it now you've got big decisions this week you've got steps you've got to make this week time's running out you need to know now I want you to stand up on your feet you stand up on your feet you need to know now you need an answer now Father, in the name of Jesus, come on, lift your hands toward heaven real high, will you? Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, you see every person who stands in this room. Lord, they stand because they need you. Lord, they stand because they acknowledge the fact that they don't want to do it in their own strength, in their own wisdom, in their own ability, but they want to do it with you. They don't want to try to walk on water without you, God. They want to walk on the water with you. Lord, they stand because they're not afraid to get out of the boat, but right now they need to know that you're going to be on the water with them. Lord, they're not afraid to try, but they need to know if they begin to sink, you'll be right there to reach out your hand and pull them up out of the water again. Lord, you see the faith that they stand with, and you know their need. You know every question. You know every next step. You know every decision that has to be made. And God, I just celebrate your truth that you do not offer confusion but peace and soundness of mind so Lord let that be established in their hearts let it be established in their minds Lord bring peace bring a sound mind Lord we come against all confusion we come against all fear And we declare your promise. Lord, even now, begin to saturate their minds. Let them feel your peace flood their minds right now. Lord, let them feel your peace cover them right now. Let them feel your presence. Hover over them with your presence. Put your hand upon them. Let them feel your grace. Let them feel your spirit. God, let them experience your wisdom. Speak to them right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, let them feel your grace. Lord, work a miracle in their life. Work a miracle in their minds. Lord, bring clarity. Lord, give them the courage and the boldness to, to step out of the boat, to step on the water, knowing that you are there. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, who is the strong and the only Son of the living God. Come on, everybody, stand up on your feet right now. Let's worship one more time, can we? Just lift your hands right now. Come on, let him know that your faith and confidence is in him. Just tell him, I believe in you. Lord, I know you will. I trust you. I believe you've done it before. Now you'll do it again. Come on, sing it again. I believe in you. I believe in you. Yes. I believe in you. Come on, just thank him. Because the hand is already on. Lord, we thank you in advance for it. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Come on, one more time. Get it way down deep in your spirit. Tell him, I believe. I believe in you. Come on, just the voices. I believe in you. Yes. You're the God of miracles. <laughs> Come on, declare it again. 
sing it out. You're the God of miracles. Come on, team, sing with me, sing with me. All of you, come on. I believe in you. <laughs> I believe yes. in you. You're the God of miracles. Come on, come on, sing it out. Show the devil he's got no place in your mind. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God. in the name of Jesus right now we've declared our faith in you our trust our confidence rests in you now Lord as we keep focused on you as we lead like the leaders that we are Lord may we lead ourselves in such a way that the world is inspired by our steps Inspired by our confidence. Inspired by our faith. And we'll be sure that you get all the praise, you get all the glory, and you get all the honor for it. Now, if you're here in the room while we're still in a moment of worship, if you would say, Scott, I want that kind of faith. I need that kind of faith. I want that for my future truth is there's too much I've withheld from God I've lived my life like I can do it without God I've, I've lived my life like it depended on me I've had self-confidence but I haven't had God confidence and it's because I've withheld so much of me from him I've tried to live without him, but I just believe that life is better with him. And today, before I leave this place, I need to give him my heart, all of my heart, all of me. And today, I choose to say yes to him. If that's you and you're here, you just feel the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart, calling you into a relationship with him that you've not allowed yourself to have in the past. I want you just to, just to raise your hand and say, that's me. That's me. Yes, I give my heart to Jesus today. Come on, if it's you, just raise your hand really high. I want to see you all over the room. Anybody? God bless you. I see you. Yes. God bless you. I see you. God bless you. I see you. I see both of you in the back. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you, sir. I see you very back I see you ma'am I see you I see you in the back I see you sir I see you thank you thank you I wonder if all of us in the room right now if we could just pray this prayer together those of you who raised your hands and then the rest of us as a family if you raise your hands and you meant it just put one on your heart and lift the other one toward heaven as a sign of surrender and let's pray out loud together come on say Lord Jesus thank you for your grace Come on, everybody pray. Lord Jesus, I want to hear confident prayers. Lord Jesus, thank you for your grace that's more than enough. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that draws us to you. Right now, I confess, I invite you to live inside of me, to wash everything in me that isn't like you. Wash it out of me. Forgive me. Give me a new heart. Give me a new start. Empower me by the Holy Spirit to keep my eyes on you, to lead like a leader, and to live my whole life for you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Come on, put your hands together and celebrate with all of heaven for those who prayed that prayer right now. If you prayed that prayer in your minute, whenever you leave today, right outside those doors, Jacob will be there. And a little table just says, I decided, I made a decision. Stop by and see Jacob. Get some of the material that he has for you there. We'd love to help you get started on that journey of faith the right way. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you next Sunday morning as we finish up fight for our future.